Okay, welcome everyone. Hello from Tokyo for our first installment of meetings with remarkable Buddhists, socially engaged Buddhism in Japan in the 21st century. And I am having dessert with Reverend Mari Sengoku, our uh, first guest in this series. We are sitting in the uh, sixth floor restaurant of the Tokyo Grand Hotel, which is um, a really great expression of modern Japanese Buddhism. This uh, hotel is run by the Soto Zen sect. So all of you with romantic visions of Soto Zen, uh, this is, I suppose, romantic too. It's a, it's a nice restaurant. Uh, their headquarters uh, or their, their Tokyo offices are down on the first couple of floors of this hotel. Uh, Reverend Sengoku is spending the night here at this hotel. And tomorrow, Reverend Sengoku is going to be doing a workshop on Nikon for the Rinsho Buddhism uh, Chaplaincy Training Program. She's going to be working with um, Buddhist chaplains in training, teaching them Nikon. Uh, so tomorrow is her workshop. And so we're just going to have a little discussion here over coffee and cake and dessert. Um, and let's dive in. So let's, um, I want to uh, introduce Reverend Sengoku properly. Reverend Mari Sengoku is a priest of the Jodo Shin uh, Pure Land Hongganji denomination. Um, and she was the first Buddhist chaplain at the Vihara Hongganji Nursing Home and Ahsoka Vihara Clinic for terminal patients established by the Jodo Shin Hongganji denomination in 2008 in Joyo City near Kyoto. And um, these, these aspects of her work are detailed a lot in our upcoming book. Um, she is also presently a chaplain trainer and supervisor at the Rinsho Buddhism Chaplaincy Training Program, which is also featured in another chapter in our book. And she is also the founding director of the Awakening Mind and Body Nikon Center in Totori. Um, so let's begin, let's, Let's dive, dive right in with your um, Nikon work. Um, Nikon is very interesting. It was, as far as I know, founded by a Jodo Shin priest. Mm -hmm. uh, what was his name? Um, Reverend Ishin Yoshimoto, Ishin Yoshimoto mm -hmm. yes. Um, but it's, a, it's an interesting form of, of practice. Um, I had a very simple exposure to it once. In some ways, it, it reminds me less of, of Buddhist aspects and more sort of a traditional Japanese way of approaching life, which is gratitude towards your parents, especially, and um, thinking of how much they've devoted to you and a deep reflection on your support from your parents and, and how that's an important aspect. And I know that Nikon therapy is is used for all different kinds of people, but I'm I'm not so clear on the Buddhist connection. So I'd love to have you tell us a little more about Nikon um, and how you see it uh, connected with with Buddhism and Buddhist practice and teachings. And yeah, just tell us a little more. Not a lot of people know about Nikon. Okay, uh, Nikon means a way of self reflection and. Mm -hmm. uh, um, rooted in uh, Jyoto Shin pure and Buddhist uh, practice, um, I mean, one of the sects. And uh, mm, it's now the uh, Nikon, the technique is uh, adapted, integrated into uh, therapeutic um, places like a psyche unit or the, the psychological uh, settings. In Japan, in Japan, and then also, um, I what, what I heard is um, uh, Germany, Austria, and um, my good friend is doing that in Bur Bulgaria? Bulgaria, Bulgaria, yes, yeah. wow. And then now that in China, Nikon is really has become popular, mm -hmm. yeah, because um, uh, economic has really uh, grown. But on the other hand, many people go through depressive disorders and alcoholic. So the Nikon, the method of Nikon is approved by uh, um, 
Chinese government, so like a Shanghai and Peking, mm -hmm. Beijing, the many um, psycho psychiatrists, um, they provide Nikan treatment. So um, the Nikan Association is held normally once a year. So a bunch of uh, Chinese doctors and therapists that visit to Japan to join the program. Oh, Reverend Yoshimoto developed this method in the pre-war era. 1950s. 1950s, okay, yeah. post-war era, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. So kind of a kind of a an Asian form of psychotherapy as opposed yes, yes, to westernly yes. de derived. Yes, yes. So mm -hmm. so normally the Morita therapy yeah. uh, from like uh, the basically the uh, it is said uh, rooted in uh, uh, them, mm. them, right. and just like that, the the, the Nikon is based on pure land mm -hmm. Buddhism. Yeah, mm -hmm. still both they are uh, integrated as a the mental health treatment. Could you tell us the difference a little between the Zen Morita and the Pure Land Nikon? Mm -hmm. um, the Morita is normally the target is it's called like a Shinkeitsu. Mm -hmm. it, uh, what is it in English? Um, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Obsessively, obsessive. uh, OC, OCD, obsessive OCD, compulsive OCD, disorder. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. That kind of that kind of type of people. Right. Target. Targeted. Right. So, um, but Nikon is for everybody. I see. Yeah. So the for common people like a students and teachers, housewives, businessmen, the Nikon is used as a way of self improvement and self reflection. Mm. And then for the mental, the uh, people with the mental problems, and uh, depressive disorders, or alcoholic, and uh, um, other kind of addictions, is uh, Nikon is used as uh, treatment to mm. cure mental problems. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So Morita is target is very specific. Mm. And then the, um, how they treat is very long. Right. Yeah, like a one week. Zettai Gajuku is absolutely uh, on the bed for right. a week. Wow. And then uh, uh, they later they do like a easy kind of uh, uh, work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and gradually, yeah, but Nikon is normally the traditional one is for seven days. I see. Yeah. So a wide range of applications from people who are have serious psychological problems to people who just want to improve their life, who are feeling a need for greater meaning and depth. Oh, yes, uh, everybody uh, confront mm -hmm. the difficulties in life, mm -hmm. like for instance, should I divorce right. or uh, what should right. I do mm -hmm. in my future I see. you know and for the problems with the human relationship right yeah so you said it's rooted in pure land Buddhist teachings mm -hmm. um tell, tell me more about these roots what what are the pure land Buddhist features that we find in Nikon therapy oh, yeah um, basically, Nikon started uh, the, from the practice is called Mishirabe. Mm -hmm. And Mishirabe is very strict uh, austerities mm -hmm. among certain uh, Pure Land Buddhist group. I thought Pure Land Buddhists didn't engage in auster austerities. I yeah, know. So that's the, this is... that's the Igyodo, the Nangyodo is the easy way of the Pure Land. Yeah, but somehow the, this Mishirabe is used for the Deep self reflection. I see. Yeah, very deep self reflection. So, but it's a kind of secret, secret to method. Mm. So, but it involves like fasting and yes, isolation. Yes. I fasting, isolation, no sleep. I see. No drink. So that's that's that also sounds like a Rinzai Zen training. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Well, or, I, or common common Buddhist, uh, you know, I training. Uh, yeah. But in terms of Mishirabe, right. you, I don't know exactly how right. they do, but uh, that uh, strongly um, do self-introspection, okay. you know, like, so, 
what kind of person am I? Am I enough, the good person enough to go to the pure land? Mm. And so uh, it is said the more you see inside yourself, you find like a, a scorpion or the poisonous mm. snakes right. inside yourself, just right. like Shinran right. mentioned about himself. Mm. Yeah. Shinran is the founder of the Jodo Shin school. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So mm. then uh, in case of Yoshimoto, the founder of the uh, Naikan, um, he... Can I stop you there for a second? That's yes. interesting because especially in Mahayana, it's thought the deeper you go, the more you find the Buddha nature, mm. your enlightened nature. Mm. But Jodo, Pure Land Buddhism is, is almost the opposite. It's the deeper you go, the more you realize what a fool, mm. what a, a bombu mm. you are, uh, mm. what a helpless right. person yeah. stuck mm -hmm. in samsara you are and thus how much you need the saving grace of mm -hmm. Amida. Right. Okay, so mm -hmm. Reverend Yoshi Yoshimoto was mm -hmm. what? So the Reverend Yoshimoto, uh, he tried Mishirabe right. three times, and but he couldn't uh, successfully finish. Right. So the first time, it's too much for him. Right, first time, he he according to him he succeeded. So he did mm -hmm. and completed. Mm -hmm. And at that time, what he said, said um, he didn't talk details. Seems like some kind of, uh, uh, mis mis mysterious experience. Mm -hmm. So he didn't mention exactly what it was. But what he really said that uh, uh, just because uh, we are alive, no matter who you are, e either very evil or the good person, you are sustained by so many other people mm. and the uh, environment and mm. nature. Mm. Yeah. So the universe gives you mm. the, what you need, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, this is very simple, but uh, very important um, truth. Just it sounds like an experience of interdependence. Yes, it's yes, interdependent. Yeah. You, you see that. Right, yeah. interdependence. Yeah. So, so, yeah. But normally we talk about interdependence, but like in the temple, we listen to the, the, the sermons and things, but we many times we listen interdependence. And then we, I think we understand just here. Right, right, but, right, but right. Green icon is really, you know, go deep mm. into your. Uh, heart or soul or spirit right, right. yeah yeah so but as yoshimoto said but uh, the mission is too strict right yeah so what you want to to convey to everybody is a very simple thing your interdependence you are sustained mm. yeah by uh, so many the environment people mm -hmm. and uh, so he wants you to let all people recognize realize about this right yeah so right. he made it he changed into a very simple three questions of Nikon mm. yeah. so that is uh, what other people you did to you and the second question is what, what other people did to, to you support you yes yes, right. yes okay yes, yes and the second question what did you do to for other people, what did you return to oh, other people? Right. And the third question is any difficulties and problems you caused caused other people. Yes, I yes, see. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So normally we see we think about uh, like at the first question. Uh, normally we tend to what um, I did to other people. What I did for them. Yeah, 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 yeah. How then, I helped them. Right, right, right. How I helped. So, and then, oh, I helped this and I did right, that. Right. But he or trying she. Trying to convince yourself you're a good person. Yeah, yeah, right, right, <laughs> right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then the third question, the problem that uh, yeah, you cause. And normally we think about other people cause you problem. Right. Yeah. So that the, we tend to have very uh, self centered right. the perspective. Right. Yeah. In terms of relationship. But Nikon is reverse. Right. The, yeah. So right. that is why the according to you uh, do self-reflection that you know you see totally opposite the mm -hmm. perspective in a way of uh, the thinking. Mm -hmm. Then you realize, oh, 
you know, so normally after an icon, people say, I didn't realize how much other people helped me, mm. but how little I returned. Mm. That I have caused so many problems to mm. other people, mm. but but that they forgive me, mm. forgive me. Mm. Mm. So that's the, how do I say, the structure mm. of an icon. Right. Yeah. So when someone has such a, a deep experience of this interconnectedness, mm -hmm. what is often the result of this kind of experience? Oh, results? Mm, so normally people, so the, 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 if you're interested, the big difference between yep. like uh, Westerners yes. and then the Japanese. Yes, I'm sure, very yeah. different. Yeah, the, well, I, I did Nikon the, in Hawaii for mm -hmm. uh, several years. And then uh, the Westerners, they want to uh, practice Nikon. They, they want to be more, how do I say? Mm, um, more, they want to be a uh, better high higher right they want to achieve that they yeah, 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 like a, yes, like yes, yes, get yes, an yes. a plus in nikon mm, they, they they want to be the cultivate themselves cultivate uh, right. yeah cultivate but right. in case improve of, themselves yes yeah, yes improve right, right. yeah but in case of the japanese they come to my place it's like a, uh how do you say kakekomi dera do you know kake uh, yeah like a, a refuge refuse temple yeah. like they're running away right, to, running, to yeah. get away yeah, and... so like a last place right last place yeah right. so that they 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 did many things but didn't work right so but they have lots of suffering right. pain inside right. themselves so the, please please do something right. so they, they finally come to my place right right yeah so the outcoming is of course that those are people who want to improve themselves i'm sure they have a much, um, much deep insight right. about themselves, relationships. But they're also kind of desperate. What do you mean desperate? Desperate, like this is my last chance. This is my, I'm, I've tried everything. My life is a mess. Um, like, I don't know what else to do now. I'm coming to you, please help. Oh yeah, in case of Japanese? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, but while you're doing the Nikon, then normally that they really, you know, the correct memories, you know, pick up the memories, like, uh, oh, my mother did so many things. And then uh, uh, normally people have a tendency that uh, the count what they didn't get. Mm. Yeah, uh, what they lost. Right. Yeah. However, while doing Nikon, they realize that there are so many things they have given. Mm. Yeah, yeah. They have been given. They yes. have been given. Yes. Mm. Yeah, and then so many things. That so they 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 come out with a strong sense of gratitude. Yes, yes, yes. yes. That's, that's, that's happened naturally. Right. Very naturally. Yeah, I think gratitude is also a really big aspect of Pure Land Buddhism. Right. Right. Gratitude. Mm -hmm. Gratitude is implicit in Buddhism, but not necessarily something that's sort of taught directly. I think it's certainly something that comes out of the sense of interdependence, but gratitude is very strong in the sense of, mm. of having this connection with Amida Buddha right, right, right. Mm -hmm. and being in sort of a, a desperate mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. a lot, certainly a lot of gratitude, I guess, in Tibetan Buddhism, gratitude towards your teacher. Mm -hmm. So that's, mm -hmm. that's quite interesting. Mm -hmm. So the, the what you go into Nikon, the first, you know, you see uh, lots of your shortcomings, right. self-centered, mm. and then uh, the, the problems that, however, and then you sometimes feel like uh, depressed, you know, right. oh, I right. did right. this and caused this problem. Right. How do you come out to a positive yeah. recollection when you're basically going, I'm worthless and I haven't given back and I've received a lot. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like you get even more depressed. Yeah, right, right. But <laughs> at, the, at the same time, I don't know, even though I'm like this, I've been still, uh, people never abandon me. Right. People continuously, right. you know, giving me support. Right. Yeah. So, that, but the important thing is the first, you really have to, um, realize that you're how much you cause problems right. 
how much you kind of always complain. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But still, people love you. Still, right. people right. support you. Right. Yeah. So it's it's the it's how do I say mm, connect to the teaching of the pure land. Right. Yeah. So. But do you do you introduce pure land concepts and ideas at all? You or mean you... that my clients? Yes, do you yeah. talk about Amida Buddha? Uh, so it depends on the person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it depends on the person. Like uh, in the United States, people more the comfortable with re religion, religious practice. Mm -hmm. But in case <laughs> of Japanese people right. after the war, and right. uh, yeah, so especially like uh, what is Omu, Omu, the Omu, the Omu incident, Sari, Sari yes, incident the, things, yeah. the cult that poisoned the subway. Yes. Right, right. So many people have an allergy right. of religion so. right. but my place uh i have a like a statue of amitabha right, and right. Then, uh, we ex <laughs> exercise do yoga mm -hmm. in front of amitabha so naturally they they see it right yeah so um it's totally depends on the person but mm -hmm. uh, they put their hands together in front right. of the buddha so yeah so you were telling me um, earlier when we were eating dinner that um, a lot of Nikon retreats are like a week long, but you do yours in three days mm -hmm. and you've had a lot of success in three days because you integrate other things. What are these? You integrate yoga. What are, yeah. what are these other things that help people open up more quickly? Right, right. The, the, the stretch that the, the asanas. Normally, the traditional Nikon is that you know, I experienced the traditional one, so I really understand. Um, they we need seven days definitely right. because okay, that you enter the Nikon dojo, right. and then okay, yeah, please welcome. Now, this is your room, sit down, mm -hmm. and then this is your assignment. For example, uh, please recall um, the memories that, uh, with your mother mm -hmm. according to three. Nikon questions uh, when you well, from when you're born until uh, seven days, uh, mm. seven years. And uh, I come back to you for interview after uh, two years, two, two hours. But then your mind doesn't really uh, adjust, mm. you know. So normally it is said Nikon no, Mikkame no Kabe is like a third day yeah. wall you you break through the wall right right right, day, right yeah. next three days right so yeah. that until very similar to meditation retreat yes mm -hmm. until the, the the end of the third day people just frustrate mm. you cannot recall mm. you know that right. yeah or refuse to recall <laughs> right, right refuse, yeah but it, it's it's natural but right. in, in my place uh, that as, as soon as the clients come then we do um some practice the uh, stretch body and then uh, yoga and then uh, uh, we do um, breathing technique like a mindfulness right. yeah and uh, and then meanwhile we do some ki chi qigong qigong, qigong, yes. qigong also yes. so that they never experienced the third breakthrough wall right my place right so and then uh, uh, actually the that start the really in the night concession. I have some guide, guide, right? Yeah, guide, 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 guiding meditation, right? Yeah, so that's the, they have easier time to recall. Like, a first, please recall where you live when you are a child, you know, mm. please recall your house. I see, yeah, and then your house or the garden or the, something like that. Mm. And then now, that please think about the entrance of your house. Now let's go into the entrance. And what are you seeing now? You know, did you say a mom and back? And did you hear your mother's voice or something like that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. very interesting. Mm -hmm. Um so tomorrow you're doing a workshop mm -hmm. um with um these these candidates mm -hmm. to become Buddhist chaplains. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, it's just a four hour workshop. So there's not going to be a lot you can do with them. But uh, some of them um, are able to move on mm 
mm-hmm. in the program, mm-hmm. and then they'll they will come to you mm-hmm. and do a retreat with you. Mm-hmm. So, um, what's your what's your experience been like working um, with with Buddhist chaplains in training? Most mm-hmm. of the people who take this, um, in fact, all other people, not well, the people who take this Buddhist chaplaincy training program, it's not open to everyone. Um, a lot of Buddhist priests. Uh, quite a number of wives of Buddhist priests, um, and then a, a few just um, very serious lay people. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's kind of the profile of the kind of people who come through the program. What's been your experience teaching Nikon and working I mean, with these chaplains? These chaplains? In training. <laughs> yeah. Actually, they come to do Nikon at my place because, how do I say? Mm, they need to work inside mm-hmm. themselves. Mm. Yeah. Uh, everybody has issue, right? right? Trauma. Right, and, right, right, uh, right, stuff, right. Stuff while they grown up. And then uh, uh, in case of chaplain, uh, if your issue is uh, uh, may disturb right. to prevent you from listening to other people's problem. Mm-hmm. So when you listen to other people, and then if you still have a trauma, oh, I have this very similar experience. Mm. So, uh, right. uh, so then it's not you're not really listening to the clients. Mm. It's you thinking and then work with your own trauma and problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is not really listening. Mm. Yeah. So important thing is, uh, and then uh, uh, some of the those uh, the candidates, the chapter that. They have, for instance, uh, one person uh, issue with her father. Right. Yeah. Like uh, the father abandoned mm-hmm. uh, her family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then, the, um, and then when I listened that her, you know, that story, I thought, well, wow, she's very good. She mm-hmm. has such a very good potential mm-hmm. as a chaplain, mm-hmm. but her trauma right. with the father right. may really disturb mm. the relationship mm. with the, the, the uh, her, not target, how the uh, patients. With her patients, with yes. Her patients, yeah. yes. So then she came and then uh, at the end she said um, that, that the father passed away several right. years ago, but still right. she couldn't forgive her father. Right. But then uh, because of an icon that she recalls so many uh, good things the father did mm, mm, to mm, her. Mm, mm, then before mm. that, she just focused on the, what the father didn't do to her. Like uh, all her mind is right. mostly occupied that uh, she's been abandoned. Uh-huh. Yeah. But still, the bef- before that happened, father gave her lots of love. Mm. Yeah, that did a lot of things to her. Right. Yeah, so she re- remembered that. Mm. And then uh, finally she said, uh, I I now feel like the, the my father the, the went to current with Amitabha. Right. Yeah, that's image. Right. Uh, appeared. Mm. Yeah. This woman was a wife of a priest. No, no. she was a, a originally she was a nurse. She was a nurse. nurse. Okay. Yeah, she was a nurse. So she doesn't come from a Buddhist family or background. Background is uh, she's a pure and uh, Buddhist follower, but not right. really sincere. It's right. like a family, right. yeah, that was family, family tradition, family denomination. denomination. Yes, mm. yes. But other denominations, uh, the uh, ministers right. came as a training, and then the one he is what is it, Kariwa? Nichiren. Nichiren. Yeah. Lotus yeah. Sutra. Yeah. Yes. Lotus, uh, his uh, uh, sister. Yeah. His sibling uh, died because of drug abuse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so and then uh, it's what his trauma. Right. Yeah, and then also uh, his father uh, was uh, how do I say successful success businessman. Right. Yeah. Actually, he was not from temple family. I see. But oh. He married to a uh, uh, woman. Right. From oh, temple. yeah. This is the interesting one. So. Mm-hmm. Most priests in Japan are the sons of priests, mm-hmm. and it's passed down. But nowadays, especially with a decreasing birth rate, mm-hmm. there are a lot of temples that only have daughters. Mm-hmm. So the daughter will marry a man, and then the man will 
become a Buddhist priest and like sort of be almost like adopted by the family and mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. he's that kind of person. Yes. Interesting. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, so the I think he's also uh, has a very good potential. Right. And especially good good thing about him is like he he is he knows other society world right yeah right because yeah, he wasn't raised in the temple right, right, so right, he right. knows the wider world right 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 he has right, a wider yeah. perspective exactly yeah right yeah. but he he rejected the fact that that sister died like the way right he couldn't really accept the reality right right so right. he said even he couldn't put his hands together in front of her grave mm. yeah mm. and then now in case of his father too you know for him the father is like a superman right. strong right, 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 but, right, right. yeah but uh, toward the end of his life he was in the hospital right. and then he had to wear a diaper right. and then uh, he had that the nurse kind of treat him like a baby right you know right. but still after that toward the, the end of the night and he said uh he you know the I mm -hmm. think during night and he collects so many good memories with the sister right. and uh, of course father and said now I feel that both of them uh, side by side, mm -hmm. side by both side and then mm. walk with me. Mm. You know, so, mm. And then especially like uh, the now I understand the nurse really try to be kind to my father right yeah not treat him like a baby right but at that time i couldn't really understand right. the kindness of the, mm. the nurse mm. yeah but now that i i feel the different way mm. yeah so as as i understand so in the chapter in our book on buddhist chaplaincy um i discuss this very basic aspect of chaplaincy training that you find um, everywhere in the world, or at least it's a main part of chaplaincy training, which is this, the, the religious professional has to shift. Many religious professionals are taught to be preachers mm -hmm. and not listeners. Mm -hmm. And that's a really big shift. Mm -hmm. And in order to be a compassionate listener who can really help people, you have to have worked on your own stuff. Um, ideally, in theory, when you become a religious professional, you go into training and you work on that. Mm. But that's the theory. The reality, not just in Buddhism, but almost in every old traditional religion, is the training system is old, outdated, ritualized, and actually people don't do much good training in a lot of places, not all. Mm. So that's why chaplaincy development came because mm -hmm. it was trying to make up for the deficiencies mm -hmm. in the traditional program. Mm -hmm. So what happens is, is in our program too, we get people who are Buddhist priests who are supposed to be well-trained and we find out mm, some of them aren't so well-trained and they need extra training, especially they need extra confrontation with um, their issues and problems. So in our program, when Jin and you and the other um, uh, chaplaincy trainers decide that there's a candidate who's quite good, we'd like for him or her to graduate, but they need a little more work, they go to your mm -hmm. place. It's the only place that we send them to, right? We don't have another special training center do we special training center i don't know but uh, i think at the same time they can go uh, for instance right right well we have we have places that they do mm. sort of residency mm. um where they train mm. in kind of social work mm -hmm. where they may cultivate themselves further mm. but i think it you're the only places like the kind of the special it's kind of like i don't know it's almost like it's not detention. It's kind of like after school extra work, you know. It's like it's like okay, you've you've done everything, but you're right, not right. quite right, right. there, this and you the need condition. a little more right, right, right. inner work. Right, right. right. So uh, you 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 play a very important role in the larger program because you provide that place mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. a 
lot of priests can sort of get over the hump, as it were. So I'd like to change the topic a bit mm -hmm. um, to a topic that is not addressed properly mm -hmm. at all, or not at all, but almost rarely addressed in um, Japanese Buddhism. Um, and actually, it's a problem in Japanese society. Um, there's a there's a the World Economic Forum has a um, system rating every year mm -hmm. on the role of women in social, political, um, economic, and cultural areas in a society. And so they rate different countries on the level of how much women are active in those roles. Japan and Korea rate very low, like something like 120 in the world <laughs> for women's empowerment. So Japan is well known for being a very patriarchal place um, where it's very difficult for women mm -hmm. to be empowered mm -hmm. to be active outside of mm -hmm. what's considered to be their only role, which is as domestic mm -hmm. um, world of taking care of mm -hmm. parents and mm -hmm. grandparents and children. Mm -hmm. um, the Buddhist world is probably worse than mm -hmm. the mainstream Japanese world. It's even sort of farther back in time. Mm -hmm. um, so I would, um, and, and one of the missing sort of pieces of this um, of this book is a is a full fledged chapter on um, Buddhism and women in Japan. But the reason there is not a full chapter is there's not really much of a movement um, here in Japan. Not like in Taiwan, where mm -hmm. I think like what is it, sixty or seventy percent of the ordained mm -hmm. um, monks in uh, Taiwan are women. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also a dynamic now um, ordination movement in the Theravada world. So there's not much of a sort of Buddhist feminist movement um, in Japan. And I'm, I'm sure that'll start to happen. But I, I would like to hear your reflections, your oh. critical reflections mm -hmm. on being a woman in the Japanese Buddhist world, mm -hmm. and especially being a woman who is socially engaged, who's trying to do things in society. Um, Oh, yeah. okay. Ooh, yeah, so I'm the first woman minister who dispatched from uh, Kyoto, uh, Honganji, right. the border of Honganji to Hawaii. Oh. But um, uh, so, so uh, a lot of the Japanese Buddhist sects and um, priests, they're, they have overseas temples, but they're mostly in the United States and they're mostly in Hawaii. Um, so you were the first female mm -hmm. sent by the Jodo Shin Honganji, which is the largest traditional Buddhist denomination in Japan. Right, right, right. Okay. Yeah, but the first they uh, they they never ad admit me. I mean, uh, since you are a woman, you're not supposed to examination <laughs> to uh, enroll the position. Mm. Yeah. So. Uh, there is no, um, how do you say, no, no example. So, right. yeah. Right. But then, uh, so I went to the uh, international center in right. Honganji with right. my mother right. and uh, asked the, the, uh, the, what is it, the director. Yeah, uh, it's unfair right. to be refused just because right. it's a woman. Right. So uh, let me just try. Right. Yeah, and then uh, uh, it was like. Uh, what year was this? Uh, it was. Let's see. Uh, I I I went to Hawaii in 1994. 1994. So I think like 1992 or something. Right. Like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. So now after me, the some women mm -hmm. got dispatched, but mm -hmm. I was first one. So. so one of the big reasons I think you were rejected is that in the book I cover how. Japanese Buddhism became very laicized over a period of time, but especially since the Meiji period, mm -hmm. um, Japanese Buddhist temples have been, have replicated mainstream Japanese society, which means it should be a, a heteronormative, heterosexual couple mm -hmm. running a temple with a male priest and his wife mm -hmm 
making a nuclear family, mm -hmm. and they provide almost a model mm -hmm. for the citizens mm -hmm. to be like, like they're the model nuclear family. Mm -hmm. So you weren't married, mm -hmm. and you wanted to go there as a single woman, mm -hmm. which just didn't fit mm -hmm. into their container of we need a male priest and his wife uh, to send a yeah, maybe right maybe right <laughs> that's true that's true yeah right 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 yeah but, but that, that's the that i experienced the first like uh, uh injustice right yeah the, about equality of uh, men and women right yeah and uh but anyway and then the director said uh, it's not easy as you think right and i got dispatched <laughs> and then uh uh, but uh, yeah, I, I'll be there like for 12 years altogether. Wow, you were there for 12 years. I don't know, like several years later, the second woman came right. from Japan. Right. I relieved. Right. Okay, I can go back to Japan anytime. Right, right. Yeah. So you, you didn't want to go back as a failure. Yeah, so, right, right, right. So you pushed on through. Right, 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 right. Yeah, but because of uh, everything, I appreciate that experience also. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, because I was in Hawaii, I could learn the uh, chaplaincy. Right. You. That's when you were yeah. working in the hospital in right. Hawaii. Right. Yes. Right. 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 Yeah. 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 And then if I was like uh, assigned as like a paradise, like a temple, right. I never thought about oh, I have to take a degree or I have to yeah. study or you know I oh, never thought uh, about that. So that that's fine. They, mm. they push me. So mm, that I appreciate everything. So because of some of the difficulties you had. Mm. Um, working in that local temple, right. then um, you were, you decided to become mm. a chaplain mm -hmm. and, and that, 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 that one a degree. Right. That, yes. You got a degree and then you, you worked in a hospital in, in Hawaii. Right. Yeah. Uh, Reverend Sengoku has written um, a lot about those experiences in the book we did together, mm -hmm. but it's 10 years ago, Buddhist mm -hmm. Care for the Dying and Bereaved. Mm -hmm. She has a chapter in that. Right. Um, so I encourage you to see that book. Um, and so, what about your experiences here in Japan? As a, in Japan, you don't you don't have a, you don't come from a temple family. I am. I am. Oh, you come from a temple. Yeah. yeah. I see. Mm -hmm. So, but your father's passed away. Mm -hmm. So who's and your head and your head of the temple now? Yes. So yeah, my, my mother and I operate temple. I see. Yes. So it's a nunnery. Mm -hmm. It's a nunnery. Yeah, 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 kind of, kind of, uh -huh. yeah, even uh, Chihuahua is a girl too. I see. Yeah. So, yeah, so, um, but uh, how do I say, um, I, I don't feel lots of uh, the discrimination or the things now, but um, I, I don't know that maybe that how other people see me, see us and how I uh -huh. feel could be different, yeah. So you don't you don't have any problems running the temple without a male priest. No, that's how we do now. So right. Yeah, yeah. For for now, now, and I teach uh, universities. Right. So quite busy. Right. And uh, mm, yeah, I, I can manage funerals and then everything by right. myself. Right. Right. Thanks right. to the experience in Hawaii. Right. So I have you no. Know, Station and problem. Right, right, so, right. Yeah, it, it, yeah. But my mother said, you know, that because my father passed away, right. So people see uh, us like, uh, you know, it's important to have a man, male, right, yeah, right. in the temple. My, my, my mother said that, but I think because I was in Hawaii. I, I didn't feel like that. Mm, yeah. mm. There are some local women minister too, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's this is part of the heteronormative mm -hmm. pressure in Japanese Buddhism, also towards the men. Mm -hmm. If you're a male Buddhist priest, mm -hmm. and you don't want to get married, you want to stay a monk, mm -hmm. or maybe you're actually gay or something, it's not it's not really good to be running a temple mm. without a wife, because a temple wife is seen to be a very important partner in the Buddhist temple system. But uh, that's, I think, uh, basically, uh, to start with, that's only for Jodo Pyorandu, mm -hmm. Buddhist temple. 
and because like a Kamakura period, yeah. Shinran was the first yes. priest yes. started to eat yeah. meat and fish right. and yeah. then announced getting married. Right. And then he got persecuted. Right. You know, so right. but then after the Meiji era, right. because of the government policy, right. the yeah. meat the meat eating and marriage as you ordinance. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, so, as you like. Yeah. So then they the kind of system different. So, right. But basically I think the uh how the way that they achieve toward the enlightenment, you know, the other sect not supposed to eat meat and get married, right? But they all do. Now, yeah, they now, all do now, yes. Now, yeah, right. but before they're not supposed to, right? Right. Yeah, besides pure land sect. Right. Yeah. So I think to me, if they could, in my perspective, yeah, only pure land sect. Temples have a, can marry. So this is a this is a huge issue, and mm. I write about it in the book. Mm -hmm. um, in our research, I think I think all Buddhist priests in Japan have a certain kind of identity crisis, mm. partially because Buddhism isn't so well respected in common society, and it's a very secular society. That's mm. one problem. Mm. I think there's the other problem, and it hits more the priests who come from the more orthodox sex, where they have some kind of identity crisis between like a Zen priest, like a Soto Zen priest will go train for a year mm. as a celibate monk mm -hmm. and feel like you read Dogen's writings. Mm. Dogen is about being a monk, mm -hmm. practicing Zazen, mm -hmm. going for enlightenment, mm -hmm. living in the mountains. Mm -hmm. And then they come down and they get married and then they're living in the temple and they're drinking and they don't maybe don't meditate every day. And there's some kind of big gap between the teaching that they're supposed to be following and their life. That doesn't happen with pure land priests because <laughs> the teaching doesn't say anything about meditating a lot and being a monk. So there's no gap between, right, right, right. between ideal and reality. Right. So they don't have that kind of crisis. But I think this is a crisis for some of the other sects, especially Zen, maybe even Shingon. So, mm. And then this causes uh, more lack of confidence, I think, among the young priests. Mm. And so... Yeah, I don't think we say, you know, the, the cat is out of the bag. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to get priests to start practicing as celibate monks mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. So my sense in, in writing this book is that actually engage Buddhism is a way to kind of get around it. Mm -hmm. Part of the reason you meditate and you're a monk and you go for enlightenment is to be compassionate, right? Mm -hmm. But maybe by becoming a bodhisattva, who still is married and has yeah, a drink, course. you can also become a bodhisattva. Of course, of course. And you can still be a great person mm -hmm. serving other people. Mm -hmm. Sure. So I think, yeah. Mm. Anyway, the, the marriage problem is is an interesting one. Um, that, mm. that, that maybe, I don't know, maybe as the nuclear family is part of this, this era, mm. when we get into another era, there'll be a different family system and then maybe Buddhist temples will be. We have a we have a friend, um, uh, Yamashita san. Mm, 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 mm. She is the daughter of a mm. pure land priest. She's not married, mm. but she's ordained, mm. and both of her brothers are ordained, mm. and the three of them kind of share running the temple. Mm. So they're developing a different model, which mm. is like we don't have to have a heterosexual couple with a nuclear family mm -hmm. running the temple we're just like three ordained ministers who are part of a family running the temple so mm -hmm. that's kind of interesting it's a different way of doing it. Mm -hmm. so um mm -hmm. but i mean what in general what do you how do you feel about the role of, of women in japanese buddhism do you think there's mm -hmm. Do you think it's okay? There doesn't need to be some movement to make it better or mm. it just slowly will change or mm. get better? 
Mm, I think, uh, yeah, the society itself is more the complicated and open to like a LGBTQ. Right. And so we don't have to really, uh, you know, the, the, the clearly decide this way should be or mm -hmm. like that, that we need that more flexibility. Yeah, but the most important thing is the uh, conversation between you and then the Buddha. Mm -hmm. It's very important, no matter what, mm -hmm. that wherever you are, that what kind of position is mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in myself, like I, 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 I don't really normally that think about the uh, woman minister should be the male minister should be. Or mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. I don't really think about. It. But the one thing is a good or bad. But the, I be I became the fourth. Uh, President of uh, the Nihon Bukkyo Shinri Gakkai. Uh, the Jap Japan um, Buddhist, Buddhist Psychology and Psychology Association, Asso Association of uh, Japanese Association of Buddhism and Psychology. You're the fourth, fourth president. President. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Great. So uh, just just happened. So uh, that means like uh, the. <clears throat> The members of male so itself, are starting to change. Yeah, we want to change. Right. You know, we need to, uh, we need some change. Right. You know, not all the time the male right. being a president, but right. we, we need the women, women the president too. Mm -hmm. So that's how the uh, association and the, some maybe groups mm -hmm. think like that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I don't know. It could it could be that maybe I don't know how good it is to say, but women think the nature of women is more peaceful. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. So uh, but now that this world like a uh, Ukraine and the Russian and right. different conflicts, um, we need more the how do I say uh, gender peaceful perspective right. of right. women. Mm. So yeah, in that case, I think women's um, insight and uh, the power and uh, uh, manner of compassion right. would be more could be more important. Mm. Yeah, I, I I I would. My hope would be that Japanese Buddhism could be sort of progressive in this way, mm -hmm. and then become a leader in society. Because certainly, you know, Japanese politics is just completely dominated by fairly unfriendly looking men. <laughs> so right. One of the one of the the strengths I think of um, it's interesting because again, there's these differences between Pure Land in 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 the Pure Land denominations. It's it's much easier for a woman to become the abbot. Um, and in the Zen and Tendai and those traditions, it's more difficult mm -hmm. for the woman to become the head of the temple. Um, I'm not even sure. Hi. Is there... okay. Okay. Hi. Hi. So yeah, we'll, we'll conclude this soon. Um, so I've, I've seen this in, in Jodo Shu, which is a little more conservative than Jodo Shinshu, but you have um, in in especially, I think in the more in the more like Zen style temple system, if there's a, only a daughter, she has to marry a man, mm -hmm. and the man has to be the man will become mm -hmm. the abbot. Mm -hmm. But in the Pure Land sex, the woman the oh. woman may become the abbot. So right. I know some Jodo Shu mm -hmm. female uh, female priestesses who grew up in the temple, and now they're the head. Mm -hmm. And I think that that has a huge potential for reviving Japanese Buddhism because a lot of the people who come to the temple are women. Mm, what true. you often find that's is, is, that, is that if men are religious, they become priests, but the rest of them are just out at the bar. Mm. You know, that's how they deal with their issues. But mm. women tend to, all over Asia, they, they're the ones who come to the temple. Right. When they come to the temple, 
and there's a male priest there, it's hard to <laughs> share their issues. <laughs> but if there's a female head priest, uh, it, it, it might draw in a new generation of women to a temple. I mean, do you do you have that experience? Do you have more women kind of coming to your temple going, oh, it's nice. The abbot is a woman. I can come talk to her about my problems. Mm -hmm. yeah, when I was in Hawaii, for instance, uh, as a chaplain, right. yeah, I visit the patients. Right. And then the patients are, wow, woman, woman minister, the, so happy or something. No, the, yeah, you true. Like uh, the, those people who come to my temple, the women, much right. much more women than men and i do counseling sessions mm. yeah and normally we we much more women right yeah for counseling sessions right. Nankan right. is men come oh. in, in terms of Nanka, but the regular counseling that more female come so mm. maybe female is more uh how do i say easy to reveal themselves mm. you know, they don't not really hesitate and then uh, um, well, I think women are also much more interested generally in a kind of a talk oriented oh, therapy. Right. Oh, that's true. That's true. Men are much less like, can I do it? Like, I'll meditate or mm. I'll do something kind of stoic where I don't mm. have to talk about my feelings. Mm. <laughs> the interesting thing is that those who the male come right. to Naikan right. after certain, the, like a second day, day or something, they start to really reveal themselves yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. well they once they know it's safe right right right, right, right. Yeah. so I'm, a, I'm i'm glad if they feel safe and men are more fearful about opening up oh that's true yeah but yeah but they start to say a lot so mm. yeah <laughs> and then the floodgates open oh yes yes, yes. And they start yeah, to yeah. Talk right a lot. right and that's much easier for me because mm. we can focus on the mm. problem what they mm. have right mm. yeah Cause mm. like a back to the Nikon, the, the, right. uh, the uh, basic Nikon, normally a therapist don't give much advice, just listen. Right. Yeah. But right. Uh, in my place, um, that when I realize, oh, okay, this question I should ask him, right. then the more awareness right. he gets. Right. Yeah. So as an experience, as a, a therapist, right. I, I can do that. Right. Yeah. So... Yeah, so in that sense, that the more they start to, you know, share, the easier mm -hmm. to focus on their problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, our time is up. We're, we're being thrown out of the restaurant, okay. which is good because <laughs> yeah. Reverend Sengoku needs to get her rest for a big workshop tomorrow. <laughs> so thank you very much thank for you. joining us for our first session. And um, it's wonderful to see you again. And thank you very um, much. I will hopefully see you again soon. Um, we work together actually in this um, uh, Rinsho um, Buddhism chaplaincy training program. I'm going to do a workshop later in the year of the same series that she is doing. Mm. So again, thank you very much for joining. Thank you very much. And, um, gotta get the